All right, welcome, welcome back. And a big thanks, of course, to Baby Dapa, Cassie, and the one and only Taraz. You guys just make the morning show so fantastic. Now, what am I doing here? Well, uh, well, Baby Dapa has summoned me here to talk about boxing. Not just ordinary boxing, but we've got a, a world champion. You know, it's, it's always great to have um, young legends. You don't have to be 50 or retired to be a legend. This guy is a young legend, and obviously he's going to tell us how he's made it uh, to where he is at the moment. I'm not going to waste time. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Joshua Boache. Good to have you. Uncle, good morning. Yeah. Akwaba. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. No crew, my fault. Sorry, okay. you can speak some error. A little bit. Yeah, it's great to have you. I'm so happy because um, it was a late confirmation. Yeah. And I've been telling people that we're having Joshua Boache come in. I said, wow, is he in Ghana? You know, uh, tell us a bit about yourself and the fact that a lot of people are now beginning to hear that you're in town, almost low-key, but you are such a big star. And I, I like <laughs> the way you. you keep it so grounded. Tell us a bit about yourself. Yeah, so um, I was, of course, born in this country. I was here for about nine years till I went to um, England. And I think, of course, you go to England for a better life, education, more opportunities in life. And um, boxing is something that I started to do, something that I didn't predict or had an interest in when I was young. So it was quite interesting that I got into boxing, I started to do boxing. And um, with the success that came with it, or that has come with it, people you know, start to hear your name and they want to support and kind of follow the journey. And um, hence has led me to be doing interviews with you guys and people that are interested in the story. It's, it's an inspiration because people be like, oh, well, okay, he's a Ghanaian, that's cool. But at the age of nine, you left Ghana. How did boxing come into it? Normally, Ghanaians, you know how we are. Football, football, football. Exactly. Yours was boxing. Mine was boxing. And primarily because I wanted an individual sport. I wanted to do something where if I worked hard, the results will come. I didn't want to depend on a team or a group of people. I wanted to do something that I could put in all the effort and the energy from myself and hopefully the, hopefully the results will show off. Hence why I chose to do boxing. Um, there's a team behind me, but really when that bell rings, it's you and the opponent. It's one-on-one. -on -one. Mm. What was it like growing up um, as a young black boy? I'm adding black because we, we've heard about challenges. You yeah. know, being a young boy is hard enough, but as a black boy coming from Africa, what was it like for you to grow up in the UK and uh, the positives and the negatives? If, do you know what? You ask every African that's done it, the first thing you experience is people laughing at your accent. <laughs> people laughing that you're even African. But the tables has turned up. Yeah. Everyone wants, wants to, to be, be an African. African. Yeah. The Everyone. dressing and all the rest. The yeah. dressing, the music, the language, how we talk, how we behave. Everyone wants to do that. So it's just something that we all had to go through. Um, you know, but like I said, I've always been proud to be an African when I fight. If you look at my um, my shorts, my robe, Ghana there's the flag. Jinami symbol, mm. there's the Ghana flag, the Kente, um, mm. the Kente pattern, mm -hmm. there's the Adinkra symbols, you know what I mean? So I always try to represent. Um, of course, I don't live here, but I come here very often, mm. and Ghana is where I'm from, and it's close to my heart. Oh, excellent. Now, I need to just tell you that we need to say a big thanks to Prisla Usu. You know, she made this uh, interview happen, and she's coming up with something big as far as boxing is concerned. But there's another gentleman here in the studio that we also need to meet, and he'll tell us how it's like to uh, manage a boxer, you know, the movements, the, the competition, the branding, all of it. And he's right here in the studio yeah. as well. Mr. Anand, good yeah. to have you. Good to have you. Thank it's you uh, Kenny Anand. Yes. You're also Ghanaian? Yes. Excellent. <laughs> so what, what role do you play with uh, uh, Joshua? Josh. Yeah. So um, I kind of round up the, the PR and the marketing side, the branding side of Josh. Yeah. So. yeah. And, and obviously, how easy or difficult is it to do that? Well, I always say, I think working with Josh has is, is been a pleasure. Um, his conduct, his mannerisms. Um, how he conducts himself inside and outside the ring. So for me, it allows me to do my job a lot more easier. But um, outside of, you know, him being a professional athlete, I'm also a fan rather than him just working alongside him. So for me, it's also been an honor to be able to be a part of his journey and help him to really take his brand to, to, to new heights. Young boxer, yeah. young management team, <laughs> you know, did you have previous experience or this is something that your passion is driving you? Because you, I see the people around him are very young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's, that's, that's the good thing. I think Josh is just not working with people who are just stereotypically his friends or young, but he's working with people that understand the business. So, no, this isn't just my first hand within this business I run. 
you know, um, like a sports marketing agency. Um, but what, what happened is, you know, when myself and Josh met and we collided, uh, we had like a unified vision that just helped us to understand, you know, we can be assistance to what your vision is and help you to kind of amplify your voice in the mm. right way. There's no doubt. I mean, humble beginnings and rising to the top, he's still rising. I just wonder how, I mean, you make it sound so easy, but there must be some secret. There must be, you know, apart from the hard work and the discipline, what motivates you? What drives you? The, the motivation and the drive comes from the want to help people. You know, I'm, I feel very blessed that, you know, I, I've, I've had an opportunity in life, of course, with the sport that I do. And um, I always say to people, it's a vehicle that I need to use to help people. You know, um, success isn't when, you know, you're doing well and only you're benefiting. For me, success is when the people around you are benefiting, when a wider audience is, you know, being ben benefiting from what you're doing. You know, so um, in the ring, yes, there's an approach and a style that I fight with. It's me or the other guy and, you know, it has to be the other guy. But outside the ring, be cool, be calm. There's, there's nothing going on. There's no fighting. Um, you know, so my, my inspiration definitely is to do good with the position that I'm in, um, the benefits that come with it, make sure not just myself, but people around me, you know, benefit from it. Yeah. That's excellent. And we're seeing some, you know, um, shots of you there in, in, in action. You actually just fought, what, two weeks ago? Yeah. My goodness. Yeah. And obviously you won. In and that fight right now. There you go. And, and I love the, the, your shorts. <laughs> Always that Beautiful. needs Ghana flag somewhere yeah, sure. in Boston there. And you hear the commentators always talking about Ghana. That's a huge advert for where you're coming from. And that's something that you cannot buy with money mm. because, you know, a, a world fight, title fight, maybe millions of people mentioning yeah. Ghana for mm. sure. is, is, is huge. How yeah. important is that to you and your insistence that I'm a British Ghanaian? Yeah, it's, it's very important to me. You know, it, it's, it's, it's my childhood is where I'm from. Ghana, Ghana is in my blood. You know, and um, this is where I have to give credit to, to the champions from this country that have come before me. Sorry to cut you, but did you just fight? I mean, you, you, your face looks like <laughs> you've just come I, out of the photo yeah, shoot. Yeah, literally just two weeks ago. But, um, you know, I'm very grateful because after the fight, my face was swollen, but all the swelling has gone down and okay. the hands are healed and everything. But, yeah, the fight was about two and a half weeks ago. And credit to my opponent, he was, he was a tough guy, you know, tough guy. But yeah. he put in a good show and um, people were entertained. But just... Credit to the previous champions from this country that have come before me. They've paved the way um, for myself, people like my cousin Isaac Dogbo. Um, so, you know, there's, there's a lot of us and it's inspiration for the kids. You know, since my time in Ghana so far, I've been to a lot of gyms and primarily it's to let them know that whatever they think is happening to me that's good, it can happen to them. You know, mine just took hard work and consistency. My mum always texts me, favour plus hard work equals victory. Yeah. Fa and when we say favour, we mean from God. And that's my favourite robe of all I the robes that. I've got. Yeah, <laughs> that's, you know, that's excellent. Yeah. Um, Ghana to the world. And the man on the left is what? Okay, he's just going to add the promoter, Eddie yeah. Hearn. Yeah. Eddie Hearn is the, I mean, Anthony Joshua's guy. He's one of the world's, you know, number yeah. one promoters in there. One of the best promoters in the world. For yeah, sure. man. Yeah. I love this. Fantastic. I mean, you need to, what are your plans to, obviously, you're still young, you're in your 20s, but... Soon, you know, boxers don't necessarily last longer because of the nature of the sport. Yeah. You would want to come home. You've already come, but you'd sure. want to set something up and also teach the younger ones how yeah, to yeah. follow the path. Uh, I mean, before off, off air, we were having a conversation and my manager, Kenny, was just saying, we've set up a foundation or we're, in the, we're basically finalizing it. To be fair, it is set up, mm. you know, um, and there's two kind of avenues that we're taking. There's the avenue of... Um, orphanage and the other avenue of course is boxing it's what i do so um the the sole aim here within the boxing is to educate the boxers and the coaches about the safety aspects of the sport yeah it's a great sport it can bring success it can bring um happiness and everything but it comes at a price mm. so and it's, it's a dangerous sport most importantly it is. as we know it's dangerous let's add safety to it there's some safety things that i feel we can teach them so that they can carry on and that the culture of how boxing is taught yeah. and how it's done can change. Yeah. Because like I said, there may be someone in this society that's got a long-term injury and if you ask them, what happened to you? They may say, oh, when I was younger, so-so-and-so happened to me when I was younger. But now they might be in their 20s and they've got nothing to show for it. Did they get paid one CDs for the risk that they took? They didn't. So um, 
I think it's very important for us to teach the safety aspects of the sport. Um, and regarding to the orphanage, many of us are blessing our parents. We grew up with our parents. We had a decent childhood. But there are many children out there that haven't had the same. And it's solely for us to make sure they have a good childhood. Yeah. You know, have a childhood where you can remember what's happened. Wow, that's, that's very powerful, very inspirational. Well, if you've just joined, you're, you've missed, uh, this is the champion, world champion here. And um, Boache is the name, um, Joshua. He's a Ghanaian and he's here to give back. Basically, I, I think that's how you can summarize it. But on the road, how do you manage, you know, uh, food, <laughs> your, your team, security, <laughs> keeping calm? Most and importantly, the there's no security. <laughs> there's none. <laughs> From what? Yeah, well, I've not seen any here in Ghana. Yeah, I'm, I'm as normal as anyone walking on the streets. I'm, I'm, I'm as normal as you. In, the, in this room right now, we're all the same. When There's, you go out and people recognize you, how do you, you just relax and handle it? Yeah, they, so. they might want a picture. They might want to talk about my fight. I yeah. don't mind. Yeah. You know, because if I see someone doing something that I'm interested in, I'm going to go over and say, bro, What's up? how did you do this? What is it like? I yes. want to hear the experience. So. It's no hassle. There's no security needed. You that's know? And, and, that's and excellent. It's, it's a lifestyle of hard work, you know. Mm. But most importantly, I, I mentioned you need favor because mm. a lot of people work hard, but not everyone gets to the top. They so you to, need favor yeah. from God in what you do. That's brilliant. So um, for me, it's, it's constantly hard work. And it's nice to have this time off after my fight two weeks ago to yeah. come out here to see people um, and just to give back. And again, draw energy from this country. So when I go back and I'm working hard, I'm inspired. Hmm. Let me bring you in here again. You know, it's, li listening to him is, he's just, he wants to make out he's an ordinary laid back guy, <laughs> which I get, I get that vibe. But it takes a lot to be at, at get to the top. Yeah, of course. A lot of sacrifices. And uh, you're there to make sure that, yes, as he rises, yeah. you make sure you put things in place. Okay. What, what are some of the challenges that you face in doing this? Yeah, I guess, um, I, you know, a, a testament to, you know, Josh and his conduct. We understand, obviously, from a societal standpoint, where he stands, obviously, because of his, you know, his personality and his achievements. But um, I also do credit his 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 humility in, in able to be part of the people. We was out um, yesterday visiting. Uh, we was in Jamestown and Bookham, going to a lot of the boxing gyms. And I think one of the coaches said, oh, um, you know, we have greatness in our presence. And he stopped the coach and he said, no, coach, I think you got it the wrong way around. Mm -hmm. I'm blessed to be in their presence. And I think, you know, it's not just an act in terms of how he's saying this is something how he really lives. So for me, as I said, is, of course, I'm always going to be a bit on edge, looking around, making sure that everything is around mm -hmm. in the surrounding areas. But he's a man of the people. And I think because he, he, he kind of admits that, people receive it, welcome him, and, and give him the same amount of love. Fantastic. Yeah. I, I, want you, I want you to take us through this. Greg Richardson, right? Greg Richardson, yes, yeah. please. Tell us about this fight that's so, your last fight just a couple of weeks yeah, ago two weeks ago so this this was a big fight in london because we're both from the same areas you know we know the same people um people that came to support me came to support him too so there was a lot on the line uncle you know the pride was on the line your <laughs> reputation because the next morning i wanted to wake up and to be able to walk down the road to know that i, I was bragging rights. Bragging rights. <laughs> so it's like hearts <laughs> um, olympics hearts you know yeah. it's, it's, it's a rivalry Exactly. Yeah. You know, I wanted to make sure I could go to the shop and know that I won the fight. So this is the second round again. Um, I stand my authority from the beginning of the fight. That was the plan? That was the plan because he tends to start a bit slow. So I had to make sure that I started fast. But um, this fight went the distance because the guy is very tough. I had to give him credit. You know, he took me to the 12th round. And like I said, after the fight, my face was swollen. So I, I have to give him credit. Um, but at this moment of time, again, it's literally making sure that you're protecting yourself as much as you can and making sure that you're the one that's landing the punches. Um, and there's a thing we call controlled aggression. Mm -hmm. on, on the human eye or in the normal eye, it looks like we're just, you know, throwing punches, but it's being controlled with it. And, and like I said, just making sure you're, you're dominant. But again, in fights like this, there's a lot on my mind and, and, and there's a cause that I'm fighting for. Of course, it's to win as an individual, but there's many things that come with it, and there's a long-term knock-on effect. Like I said, if you're the only beneficiary of the success, then it's no good. You want people around you to also benefit from it. People that you don't even know, you want them to benefit from it and, mm. and to put a smile on someone's face. However you do it, put a smile on someone's face.
So like, during the COVID, how did you manage? Because there was no boxing for a while. You have to stay True. indoors. You know, how was that for you? For, for me, exercising was a big thing, which I do anyways. Mm -hmm. But the culture in London, I noticed a lot of people were out running, freeing the mind, you know, being outside, not staying indoors. And for me, that was a massive thing that helped a lot. Of course, my family were around. I've got very, just very close family members that remain positive. And it's all about that, ha having a positive mindset being optimistic because sometimes people are negative and there's negativity outside and people allow that inside. For me, I kept a clear head. Um, of course, there was no fighting, but I remained positive and I stayed in shape, most importantly. So when the time came and I said, who's ready to fight? I could raise my hand and said, look, I'm ready to fight. Mm. Let me get back out there. Before we talk about, you know, Ghana, where you're coming from and all the rest of it, how difficult is it in that sector that you're in the division you're in and climbing yeah. up the competition it's mm. the, the british boxers are now one of the you know some of the best in the yeah. world yeah. yeah how are you yeah. keeping up with the competition the competition is very hard um how i'm keeping up is by winning you know um i train in this um in america so it's a price that i have to pay i always say this to people in london in ghana i'm in my comfort zone but when i go to america i'm out of my comfort zone I know maybe a handful of people and they're all athletes as well. So everything I'm doing is boxing related. I stay in the States for like three to five months of just working hard every day. When I come back to London, I have my fight. Um, and then times like this, I can rest. But it's, it's, a, it's a heavy price to pay. And me removing myself out of my comfort zone, for me, is how I stay ahead, out, um, it's how I stay ahead amongst my competition. Mm. Because they stay in London, they stay in England, wherever they stay is their comfort zone, but I'm always out of my comfort zone, working hard. I'm away from w what I know, people that I know, foods that I like, and it's a price to pay, and it's for moments like this, you know. Did you know you were going to get the... the, the... I, absolutely. In okay. a close fight, I knew I had paid the price the, during the whole of camp, and we point to the skies because, like I said, grace. the victory and the favour and the grace, it comes from God, and nobody respect else. respect your opponent, yeah. For sure, for sure. Which belts was, was that one? That was for the WBA. So, which I've probably got the best rankings with. With them, I'm number one. So, hopefully, my next fight will be for the world title. Wow. Um, that's what we're just trying to sort out with the promoters and the managers. But hopefully, wow. we'll be for the next world. Mm. The next fight will be for the world mm. title. Uh, Isaac Dogbe is your uh, cousin. The others, you know, we, we're doing a Bukum boxing right now, where Bukum is the heart of boxing. But boxing now goes; it transcends beyond Accra the North, Ashanti, the Volta yeah. especially. Yeah. And yeah. I'm sure there are a lot of young Voltarians also watching. I mean, For they would sure. want to hear from uh, their brother, their big brother on, sure. you know, yeah, say something to them to encourage them. Uh, Blen now, all I'll say is, um, you know, it, it's a hard sport, but mm. just stay driven. And, and there's a quote that I said yesterday that I'll say today. And for all that are listening, it says every day above the ground is a good day. Mm. When you're under the ground, that's it. Life is over. There's no hustle. There's no happiness. It's over. So every day above the ground, they say it's a good day. And wow. someone, someone will look and say, it's easy for you to say that. We've all got different struggles. Yeah. But when I come here and when I travel around the world and I see other people struggle, I say, do you know what? Let me keep my mouth quiet. I have nothing to complain about. Wow. And wow. you get along with them, you work hard. So they, not just for the people in Volta, but anyone watching this, yeah. you know, every day above the ground is a good day. Once there's no life, then that's it for you. Wow. Uh, you can you can summarize that in Ewe for us. If you, hey. If you, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll make a tree and I'm crying. I, I, should, I, I, I should have asked my mom to translate this before <laughs> I, came, <laughs> came. I came on. But for, just to translate, I thank every Ghanaian for the support, you know. I was saying she is Midasi. Midasi, yeah. In Ewe, Akwenao. Akwenao. In Ga is, um, oh, Chale. Orado. Orado, you know what I mean? So I'm yeah. just very thankful for the support and everything from everyone, you know. Um, it's been amazing, but I fight, of course, mm. for myself, my family, but from the country that I'm from. Yeah. You know, this is where I'm from and, and the genes and how I am as a person and how I fight and the strengths that I have, I'm Ghanaian, you know, so it's, it's no surprise. Ga Ga Ghana to the world. The Black Stars have qualified for the World Cup. They'll be mm -hmm. in Qatar. Yeah. Uh, the last time they qualified, the whole of the UK, Europe, they were 
up, you know, a, a blaze. But I see that you're very simple. <laughs> you came across, you know, the road, just walked yeah. in there. I've not seen any tattoos, yeah. no not, earrings, nah, no nah, bling nah, bling. Nah, nah. <laughs> My mom <laughs> wouldn't allow it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, she's the one making sure that. For sure. That, that's a good balance. I, I yeah. mean, wherever she is, you know, we're, we're, we're worldwide, we're, yeah. you know, um, you can you can say a final word to her and then we can wrap up. And yeah, say so to my mom, I fell now, kaka. You know, I was giving her a lot of stress, saying, "Let me do what I want to do." But <laughs> she always reminds me, you know, Sana, remember this, remember that. You know, she doesn't call me Josh; she calls me Sana. Sana, uh, yeah, which means God given. That's okay. my ever name, you know. So um, I thank her and, and my parents. You know, both my parents, they and my family as well. Everyone is is kind of hands on, and they're normal people and they're very humble people. So. It allows me to keep that same energy and to, you know, remain humble myself. Mm. So um, I thank my parents, you know, B big thank you to both of them. Awesome, awesome. Uh, Mr. Light, uh, heavyweight, he's he's a big guy, 6'2", right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, very tall. If you guys think he's a very tall guy. And big thanks to you as well, no um, Mr. Anand. Yeah. And we hope, you you know, you hold on to him tight and look after him. Oh, and we're looking forward to having a world champion very soon. Excellent. Yeah, well, uh, all too soon our time is up. I know you've had fun and hopefully we'll keep up with him. Come to the Book and Boxing Arena this Saturday and we hope to have him around so that he, you know, gives a few words to all of us, especially the young boxers who'll be there. Remember, the boxing returns this Saturday. Be there early. We start uh, from eight going, so come early and you get the chance to see uh, this young legend, Joshua Boachi. Big thanks to you once again. All right, guys, that's it for the morning show. Uh, let's meet again tomorrow morning. Bye for now.